Hey you! I'm Dallas Ann, creator of The Violet Pie, and you're watching what I think we're going to be calling After Hours. Whether that's After Hours with The Violet Pie, or Knitting Myself Together After Hours, or The Violet Pie, colon, After Hours, it's yet to be decided. But I figure we might as well start now, don't have to have a title to actually start. So here I am doing that thing I said I would try doing at the end of uh, season one on the audio podcast. So yes, this vlogging thing is really weird. <laughs> Honestly, I know the people on YouTube do this all the time. And it's just going to take some getting used to for me because I'm looking at you, I'm talking to you, but I can see me in the screen in the corner over here. And it's a little distracting and weird, so I'm sorry if things just don't go right. Like I said, this is not a branded thing. This is not anything fancy. This is just me sitting down on the floor talking to you about stuff. And you know, it's this is how I'm rolling today. My hair is how it was when I woke up this morning. I'm threw on a shawl over my pajama shirt because that felt a little more presentable and I put on a bit of lip gloss because that's what I like to do. But aside from that, this is how you'd see me in the grocery store. And I kind of hoped that we'd be able to hang out like this and that there'd be that relationship that you and I would have and I, we wouldn't feel like we'd have to like, I don't know, put on a bra to hang out together. I mean, if you wear bras. I don't know about you. I know I do, generally for the most part. Anyways, the beverage for this episode is um, coffee. Considering the name is probably going to be After Hours, I don't know if coffee is very appropriate or a very sad state of affairs that um, this is what I need to keep going today. Eh, maybe next time there'll be wine or whiskey. I, but anyways, today my whip or work in progress, because it's Wednesday today, is this cardigan that I'm designing that you've probably seen on social media. It's called Etta. It's going to be a cardigan and it is pretty amazing. I've had to frog this button band here. Well, is it really a button band? Because it's a continuous garter panel that goes all the way around. Um, Anyways, I've had to frog this sucker like three times now to get it just right, but oh, it has been so worth it. So worth it and enjoyable every single step of the way. And I've got to say, it's in large part to the amazing fiber that Alice over at Backyard Fiber Works um, donated as yarn support. It's spectacular. And when I have yarn money to spend on just for me, She's going to be getting it, there's no doubt. Because, I mean, just, just look at this. Let's see if we can get this to work here. Look at that. I mean, I can't get over how beautiful that is. I mean, oh, crazy. Mm. So, I wanted to show you how the yarn looked when it came to me and then how it looked swatched and you've also seen how it looks knit up. Um, variegated yarn, especially super sh short color changes, always makes me super nervous because I, I hate pooling. It's my control issues coming out in real life in my knitting, but I hate pooling with a passion. I know some people love it, some people live for it. That, that's not me. Anyways, this is how the skein of the variegated came. This is her field base, worsted weight. It's oh, so, just so smooshy. And let's see if it'll focus. The ply is a softer twist, but there's no splitting. There's no stitch splitting and I use Chiagu 
I think that's how you say it. The, anyways, I use those needles and they've got a fairly sharp point, not super sharp, and it still doesn't split this stuff. So I swatched it and I was really nervous, super nervous because variegated. So I swatched it without alternating skeins and I was, again, shocked and super pleased because there's, it, it's looking the way I would hope and dream variegated looks. There's no blotches of color. There's just little sparks and stripes and little explosions of excitement. Um, also, I've had some people ask me when I'm knitting in public um, why I have all these things hanging off my swatches. I might as well tell you. So I knit my swatch, making sure I can at least have four inches of stockinette either direction and I do a garter border and then on one of my tails I tie in as many knots yeah I tie in as many knots as the size number of needles I use now I use US size needles working with the millimeter you can't really do like 3.5 um, so you may need if you want to do this and you mentally think in the metric system like the rest of the world um, you may just want to use the US sizes just for ease of knotting if this is something you want to do and then typically I use the other tail to tie and attach my uh, label to so I know what yarn it is but oh this is gonna be reversed for you I'm so sad sorry again see unpolished her card is this heavy duty cardstock that I just love and it came attached to the skein with this handy dandy little um, stitch marker safety pin thing. So I just safety pinned it on and called it good. And so I keep a ton of swatches of various yarns that I use as a regular base. And this way I don't have to swatch every single time because I've got swatches in a variety of different needle sizes. and. It's pretty great. So, again, this is how the skein showed up, and this is how it knit up in the swatch. I did not alternate skeins for the swatch. The sweater, though, I was not taking any chances, and so I did alternate skeins regularly uh, in the sweater. But again, if you look, there's no massive, immense blotches of color. There's, there's a little bit, but nothing that I would consider unreasonable or unwearable. And I've got a confession. I'm, I'm kind of falling in love with this whole variegated thing. I, I don't know if I'm a life convert, but I am an in-the-moment enjoyment person. So, yeah, this is a sweater. I cannot wait to release it. It should be coming out in October. I know it seems like a long ways out, but if, if you think about it, I pitched my, my idea to Alice in May, I think, late April, early May, just before I released my Bobble Paw Shawl. And she got back to me and I said, so I'm going to need it by the first week of June. So she got me all my yarn by the first week of June, pretty sure it had to be a custom dye order. Uh, Anyways, it got to me by the first week of June, so that's four or five weeks from requesting yarn support from an indie yarn dyer artist amazing person. It gives them about a month to put it all together to get to me. And um, leading up to that, I knit this swatch, this, this where I tested my color work idea and how it also looked in just the solid. And so this, I took a picture of this and included it in my uh, email that I sent to Alice. So I got it June 1st. This is now the end of the month of June. And so I spent the whole month designing this and writing it. Then in July, I'm going to be sending it to my tech editor. She's going to take probably about two weeks tweaking everything, getting it back to me. And then I'm going to spend another week um, just massaging the details and making sure everything's super readable uh, because this pattern it's 
simple, like there's no crazy stitches. It's all knit two together, slip slip knit, double yarn overs, and then you like the next row back, you drop the yarn overs and garter stitch. Um, but there's a lot of it. There's a lot of directions and the pattern can kind of look overwhelming. So I've got to work out those details in the formatting to make it easily digestible for the knitter's eye. And then we're looking at like August. And so I'll put out a call for testers in late July, early August. They're going to have to get their yarn and cast on and do that in August and September, get it back to me like after the first full week of October. And then I'm going to take all of their data and see what applies to the pattern itself and then release it in October and also in all that time get pictures taken and stuff. So all things said and done, that's actually a really tight uh, schedule and I'm learning very quickly what my limits are. I've been actually designing two patterns at the same time and wow. Um, not two patterns itself is the problem, but I'm designing two sweaters at the same time. And that, that's just too much and I can never do that again. I think I could do something simple like a, um, a cowl or a hat along with a more complicated piece like a lace shawl or a cardigan. But yeah, I, I cannot do this two sweater thing again. <sighs> it's a lot. But that's what, uh, that's what coffee and good television that I've already watched once. So I don't have to like pay super close attention, but it's familiar enough that it keeps me good company. Right now that looks like Battlestar Galactica, the reboot. I've never actually watched the original version. I love the reboot so hard. It's it's fabulous. I'm just being unprofessional here and looking at my notes. Um, so these colors are very much outside of my norm as you can see here. I've got hot pink and grays and blacks and this is all like melting creams and browns and raspberries and plums. What? I, but seriously, when I saw these colors on Alice's site, I just, I just fell in love with it. And I can't, I mean, I could, but I don't think I should just release patterns where the sample is knit in my life colors. Um, I feel like I need to branch out and embrace color combinations that other people love to appeal to more people. And so this really spoke to me. And so I chose these colors. Um, I'm kind of thinking I might need to dye my hair um, before, before I take the final pictures, you know, back to its normal, very dark brown. Um, but I don't know, we'll see what happens. Something that I've never experienced before that happened with designing this sweater, the Etta Cardigan, is that the sweater kind of just created certain aspects in and of itself. I don't, you know, like when you're writing, you know, I was a big creative writer in high school and college. Um, and sometimes some characters just had a mind of their own and wrote themselves. This sweater is a little sassy and it, it designed itself. In some areas, it, it's not exactly what my perfect vision was, but I'm okay with that and I'm really really excited to be able to share it with you. Uh, so I know we've talked about um, what's in your notions bag which was really fun. Some more people played along on Instagram and that was really enjoyable. I, I also have another bag that goes with me all the time and, and it's not strictly a knitting bag. Um, it's my designing bag. It goes with me anytime I'm going to be somewhere overnight or like an all day event where I might be doing some designing on the fly or if I'm working on a new project. Because let me tell you, one of the worst things for me to have happen 
is to be working with one particular stitch dictionary and suddenly realize, oh no, nothing in here works. I need my other one and it's at home. So now I just don't leave anything at home. It just all goes with me everywhere, which is a little ridiculous, but meh, I'm a little ridiculous. So it all fits together. So I wanted to show that to you. Oh my gosh. It's this beautiful bag. It is an old vintage Samsonite hand, uh, like carry-on bag. It's got people's initials on it. Again, reversed for you. So sorry. But the initials are RH. And when I first got this bag, I spent like a solid two days, like, daydreaming I was people watching this person and like making up entire backstories if it was a man or a woman and it was pretty fun I, it was good it was a good time uh, so anyways this bag is actually big enough to hold my ball winder and my super lightweight plastic I think it's a Japanese brand Swift however that's set up in the other room and I didn't want to take it down and put it in here to like pull it out Mary Poppins style. You'll just have to take my word for it. But um, the things that I always carry in here, and actually I just store in here instead of on my bookshelf, are um, a bunch of things. This is my notebook of designs. This is like my brainchild. Uh, it lives in here. However, if I leave the house and I don't take this bag with me, I stick it in my purse, which is always big enough for this because it has to be big enough to hold knitting. Um, and I take this with me because I never know when inspiration's gonna hit. You, you just don't. And the one time I don't have it, I'm doomed to always have a great idea and nothing to write it down with. So, um, it's, you know, it's just full of stuff. I, uh, this lots of writing. I love my uh, four color paper mate pen. It super happy makes me so happy. Anyways, this is one thing. Um, and then the other things are my two Barbara G Walker uh, Treasury of Knitting patterns. They're charted. Uh, there's like charted knitting designs in some of her books. These don't have any charts, um, but they're amazing. They are so amazing. I mean, the pictures and the swatches are clearly dated. Um, like the photography itself is dated, but the, the, the stitches, the, the patterns are timeless. You know, it all just depends. It's a, it all just depends on what you put it on. This is, these are, ends up being the canvas for the actual design that I'm making. And I would be lost without these, completely lost. I really want the other two. There's a green cover one and a yellow cover one. <sighs> someday, someday I will treat myself to that. Um, Um, and then this book here, a designing friend of mine recommended, it's 400 Knitting Stitches by Pottercraft, a complete dictionary of essential stitch patterns. Now, this is a much more modern approach to photography. It's color. Um, I mean, all the swatches are done on natural cream because it's a lot easier to see that. Oh, oh, hey, wait, I lied. This is a two-tone double-twisted one-by-one rib. So they did it in two colors to, uh, to show the two-tone. Look at that. Learned something new. Um, so I love all the, the, the stitches. The, I, have not, I have yet to find any true repeats from the Barbara Walker patterns. So I have expanded my repertoire, so to speak. However, the patterns, the instructions are written in paragraph form. So there's no breaking. Um, here, 
you don't actually have to see the words. You just need to see the bold. Can you see that at all? Um, they're all just all smushed together. There's no line breaks for each new row. Um, the Barbara Walker things have um, each row is a new line. Apparently, my poor knitting brain does not digest this type, the mushed paragraph instruction, well at all. At all. So if I end up finding something I like, I immediately have to write it out again or sometimes type it. I'm very tactile, um, so writing is really good for me. Um, I end up having to write out the pattern before I can even knit it to see if it's going to work for what I'm wanting to do. So that was a really interesting thing to learn and um, I have used stitches from this in des upcoming designs um, but I'm not sure I can actually recommend it to anybody because I kind of hate the way the patterns are actually written out but the stitches themselves are great, so I don't know, I'm super torn, super torn on this. I have another book in here that was recommended to me by the same friend. Um, hooray, it has the spiral bound, so it lays miraculously flat. Oh, I love books like this for crafting that lay flat. Um, this is 99 step-by-step -step methods for increases and decreases backwards. Woo. Uh, I have not tried any of these yet. I'm really excited to give it a try sometime, maybe with a more simple project. I might add new decreases or a new style of increase just for a little bit of novelty factor for the knitters so they're not completely bored out of their board. Um, like this here, this is an increase and I really love the way it looks there with like little, it makes me think of something floral or vine like. It's pretty great. Um, so yeah, haven't used it yet, but the instructions are very row by row-esque as opposed to smushed in a paragraph. And yeah, so when I take this with me, I also have a complete set of uh, knitting needles. I use the interchangeables. I keep a complete set in here. They're not in here right now. They're on my bed because I was knitting in there earlier. Um, and yeah, this is great. It's like, I used to be able to put my youngest kid in here. It's so huge. Um, but we don't do that anymore because that could lead to very poor life choices later on for her and we don't want that to happen. So one last thing before I let you go. This is the prototype for my original, for my bobble paw shawl. It's my, my free birthday party shawl on Ravelry. Um, my goal is every year in the month of my birthday, which is May, I want to release a new shawl that's free as like a, yay, it's my birthday, because I love my birthday so much. Cake, cake, cake is great. And there's just something about it being because of a birthday that makes it taste even better. So this yarn is pretty spectacular. I big puffy heart it and I got it on a trip to uh, out on the west coast in Portland, Oregon. I was visiting some dear friends and originally this was going to be a pair of socks and a contrasting cuff heels and toes. This yarn did not want to be socks with contrasting cuff heels and toes. Mm -mm. That was not a thing it wanted to do at all. So I decided to just say, fuck it. And I cast on a garter tab and I just knit and changed up things until I got bored and then changed things up again. And then I looked at my lovely stitch dictionary for this paw lace print. 
and then I decided I wanted pom-poms. I wanted pom-poms all the way around, you know, teeny tiny, itty bitty baby pom-poms because they bring me joy. And then I realized I did not want to make 35 billion baby pom-poms on the tines of a little olive fork. This is where my sense of brutal, uh, being brutally pragmatic <laughs> comes into play. I'm like, I'm going to get four or five of those done and then never want to do it again. And then I will have wasted yarn and, 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 you know how anxiety works. It just started building up and I'm like, no, there has to be another option than pom-poms. And sure enough, there's baubles. Look at them. They're wee and tiny and cute and adorable and oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Bobbles. <sighs> so I did this and um, I really had no intention of writing a pattern for it. That was not a thing I wanted to do. And then inevitably that thing happens where um, lots of people saw it and were like, OMG, that's amazing. What's the pattern? Oh, you know, it just came from my head. Did you write it down? Can you at least share your notes with me? Oh. So I heaved a sigh and started writing out the pattern and talking to my friend Susan. And the next thing I know, I decide to launch the Violet Pie and go from there. So the shawl was very fortuitous and springboard for many, many things. So yeah, this is it. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how this whole blogging thing works. I, so the knitting world calls what you and I are doing right now a podcast. My understanding of podcasts is that it's strictly audio, but um, apparently the knitting world feels that what you and I are doing right now is also a podcast, which is okay, whatever. Um, but I also feel like what I'm wanting to do here is share with you about my life and stuff and things like that and just kind of have this authentic conversation, this thing that's going on which is why I'm sitting here on the floor of my place and you can probably hear the street traffic and the neighbors downstairs because that's, that's the, my life, you know? So I want to talk to you about my life. I want to share with you things that are going on, but I don't know where that line is drawn between, um, sharing things that I may come to regret about going out into the public ether of the internet and what I'm okay with talking about. Um, also, what's my story to tell or what is somebody else's story that I observed that's not my place to tell. So I'm still trying to figure that all out. If, uh, if you have any thoughts on that or experiences, would, would you let me know? Um, you can either comment here directly under this video, or you could email me at thevioletpie at gmail.com. I would really love to, to hear what you think, or you know, what do you wanna know? That's another thing. Ask questions. Maybe I'll have a list of viewer questions next time. It's all a thing, all a thing to think about. Um, so anyways, I should, uh, I should probably let you go because I've got a ridiculous amount of knitting to do and I've got stupid, this stupid adulting thing that's called grocery shopping that needs to be done before I pick up my kids from summer camp. Um, So, as much as I don't want to say goodbye for now, I probably should. So, until next time, keep that yarn moving.